If you're watching this video, then you're probably aware that Apple recently at their keynote event released a couple new MacBook Pros with their new M1 Pro and M1 Max chips. And if you're like me, then you're probably super excited about that new release because you've been waiting for months now for them to release one since at their previous two keynote events they didn't even though everybody thought they were going to and all the leaks said that they were going to and you even sold your MacBook Pro in advance. But hey, no point in dwelling on the past, unless you're referring to how the past meets the present with all the glorious ports that Apple brought back to the MacBook, like MagSafe, HDMI, and the beloved SD card slot. But all that aside, because again, if you're like me, you've already seen all the videos, you know about all the ports, and you're okay with the notch at the top of the screen. Now you're ready to make your purchase. But with all the options, you're unsure which one you should actually buy. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you why as a filmmaker photographer, I chose to go with the M1 Max and 64 gigabytes of unified memory versus the M1 Pro with 32 gigabytes and hopefully clear up some misconception about how unified memory works on the M1 chip architecture. I'll also share why I chose the 16 inch MacBook Pro instead of the 14 inch. And quick hint, it's not just because of the screen size. The dreaded Apple tax is super expensive and none of us wants to waste our hard earned money on something that we don't actually need. So let's get into it. The M1 Pro and M1 Max are both based off the original M1 architecture that rocked the computing industry almost one year ago. At the core, the M1 Pro and M1 Max operate the same but have a few major differences between the two. At their full potential, both the M1 Pro and M1 Max offer 8 CPU performance cores, 2 efficiency cores, and 16 neural engine cores. And just as a side note, both chips do come in some bend options, meaning that due to defects during the manufacturing process, rather than tossing the chips aside, Apple disables a few of its cores and then sells it at a discounted price. The first main difference between the two chips is the memory configuration. The M1 Pro offers up to 32 gigabytes of unified RAM with a bandwidth of 200 gigabytes per second where the M1 Max offers up to 64 gigabytes of unified RAM with 400 gigabytes of bandwidth. For this reason alone, if you are looking for performance and you are thinking about getting the M1 Pro with say 32 gigabytes of RAM, it's worth upgrading to at least the binned 24 core M1 Max just for the double memory speed. But in a minute, I'll share with you why I chose to spend my hard earned cash on 64 gigabytes of RAM. The next main difference is the GPU options. The M1 Pro comes with 16 GPU cores, which is double the original M1, and the M1 Max comes with 32 GPU cores, four times that of the original M1. The next difference to me as a filmmaker is a huge one and really a no-brainer when it comes to choosing between the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. The M1 Pro and Max come with a dedicated media engine that can accelerate multiple codecs, including ProRes and ProRes RAW. But the M1 Max has two additional ProRes accelerators that Apple compares to its very expensive afterburner card that is only an option in its Mac Pro lineup. This is huge to me. As somebody that works with ProRes and ProRes RAW on a regular basis, this can dramatically speed up my workflow. But even if you are not working with ProRes or ProRes RAW, most NLEs like Final Cut Pro are rendering in ProRes anyways. So this feature has the potential to save a lot of time and headaches. Now I'm gonna share with you why I chose to go with the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max and 64 gigabytes of unified RAM. The first reason I chose to go with a 16 inch MacBook Pro is of course for the larger screen and battery life. But the second reason is one that not many think of and I think is a bit more important. Because the 16 inch MacBook Pro is larger, it also has more room for cooling components as well as airflow. Since these are performance laptops, proper cooling is what's gonna keep them from thermal throttling. And we all know that MacBooks have a history when it comes to thermal throttling. This can also be confirmed because in the latest release of macOS Monterey, there is a new high power mode that is only available in the 16 inch MacBook with the M1 Max. 
Now, why did I choose to get 64 gigabytes instead of 32 gigabytes of unified memory? Many people think that because the new memory has a much higher bandwidth and much better performance, that it's not necessary to get 64 gigabytes. But let me put it to you this way. My previous 16 inch MacBook Pro had 64 gigabytes of RAM and DaVinci Resolve would regularly use most of it. And my previous 16 inch also had an eight gigabytes graphics card for a total of 72 gigabytes. In a traditional CPU GPU configuration, the CPU and GPU have separate dedicated RAM. Unified memory on the other hand is shared across both of the CPU and GPU. Your GPU is completely dependent on how much unified memory you actually have. Even if you have a 32 core GPU like in the M1 Max, it can be a potential bottleneck for GPU intensive applications like DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro. And some of you might be saying right now, well, what about all that swap memory that I hear so much about? And that's where as needed, the system will use a portion of the SSD as memory. But I use an M1 Mac mini with 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is the most you can get on a regular basis. And what people don't realize is that for one, it will only use a limited amount of swap memory and then cap out. This is a huge bottleneck and why people have been begging for more memory since the M1 was announced. Plus, if you rely heavily on swap memory, you are potentially putting unnecessary wear on a non-replaceable SSD, especially if you do video work with huge amounts of data like I do. So these are the reasons why I chose the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max and 64 gigabytes of unified RAM. I hope this has given you some insight and helps you to choose the right MacBook for you. If you have any kind of questions or comments, let me know down in the comment section. I'd be glad to help you guys out and share the knowledge that I've learned throughout this journey. But other than that, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.